The trial of Catalan separatist leaders over their failed independence bid has laid bare some stark divisions in Spanish society, not least over the justice system. My guest this week here in Madrid is Spain's foreign minister, Josep Borrell. How does he answer the charge that the trials are fundamentally unfair? Josep Borrell, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you. Last year, a lady called Carme Focadal was the president of the Catalan parliament. She was arrested, charged with rebellion. When she was interviewed last December, she was spending 15 hours a day in her cell in solitary confinement. Is this really the image of Spain that you want to show the rest of the world? This is a judiciary decision to keep people under control in order to avoid them to escape from the justice like others. A grandmother in her mid-60s in a prison, convicted of nothing, Why do you say enjoy, nothing? Well, she enjoys the presumption of innocence before Everybody her trial, doesn't she? Everybody who is in preventive, preventive jail enjoys the presumption of innocence. In Sweden, 30% of the people who are in jail are on preventive detention. It's hard not to see her incarceration as the action of a vindictive state setting out to punish defendants they should, who, who should be enjoying this presumption of innocence. It has a presumption of innocence. Preventive jail has nothing to do with it. You're on record as saying that you wished some of those in pre-trial detention were free. You said this in an interview I last said year. exactly that I would have preferred that the judge could have found another way of preventing them from escaping the action of justice. You but said there the were judge, other methods that sorry? could have been used. You said there were other methods that could have been used. Yes. So okay. this was unfair treatment? No. In your view? No? No. You'd have preferred to see them out of pre-trial no, detention? Uh, no, no, don't, don't make me say things that they haven't said. Amnesty International, according to them, the use of pre-trial detention is justified only when there is no alternative measure which would ensure the interests of justice. You have said there are alternative measures, so it is unfair. Well, look, if the judge has decided to implement this measure, it's because he thinks it has to do so. I am not going to decide in the place of judges. In Spain, judges are independent and they take their decision by their own. I understand if, that. Sorry. And if maybe Mr. Puigdemont had an escape, maybe the judge would have taken other kind of measures. Do you know that Puigdemont and others has been escaping the action of justice? Do you know that? There are very few people who don't know that on this planet. Then they explain that. But it's not your role, you tell me the courts are independent, but it's not your role to turn a blind eye to serious questions and doubts about the way your judicial system is functioning, isn't it? Because you came to power, your government came to power promising to transform and modernize Spain. My point to you is keeping people in lockdown in solitary confinement for what 15 say, hours solitude. a day. What do you mean by solitude? Solitary <laughs> confinement, 15 hours a day, a 63-year-old grandmother, convicted of nothing. Well, excuse me, why do you say convicted of nothing? Do you know about the conviction on this case? I start thinking that you don't know anything about it. She hasn't been convicted of anything, has she? She's, she's been charged, has, but she has been not charged. been convicted. Well, let's... I, I really... Stop it. If we continue like this, I stop this interview. Understand me? If you continue like this, I stop it. And you are not interrogating me. You are interviewing me. Yeah, and I'm... A, no, 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 I, no, no, you are interviewing me. You what are I'm not, trying to get You are not a police. No, I'm trying I am to not get the subject that. of any kind of inquiry from your side. I understand that. So I understand put that. the right questions and let me talk. If not, I stop it. Absolutely. I'm, okay, I'm, let's I'm, just start I'm, again. I'm, look, I, you came to power to modernize and transform Let's start Spain. again. 
Last year, the EU scorecard, which measured public trust in the independence of national courts and judges, put Spain in 23rd place on the list of member countries below Portugal, Hungary and Romania. How do you feel about that? Spain is, uh, is ranking among the 20 best democracies in the world according with all the indexes that I know, the intelligence unit of uh, the, econ the Economist, Freedom House. I think Spain is being classified in all the rankings as a being a fair democracy. But the truth is, when it comes to the charges of rebellion against the Catalan defendants, there has been a substantial outcry both here and abroad, hasn't there? Last November, more than 100 legal experts in Spain signed an open letter condemning the charge of rebellion in the Catalan case. That didn't move you? Why don't you let the judges make their work? I'm asking your opinion. My opinion is that in Spain, judiciary is an independent power. Let them do their work. How do you think that the decision of the German court, which refused to extradite the former Catalan leader, Carlos Puigdemont, on a charge of rebellion, how, how do you think that has affected the credibility of the case against him? Because the German court said the amount of violence required for the charge of high treason, which is the closest they have to rebellion, was not seen in altercations in Spain. Breach of the public peace, they said, does not apply because Paulo Puigdemont was only involved in carrying out the independence referendum. Well, this is the opinion of the German judge. I am under the rule of the Spanish judges. But it's a blow to your case, isn't it? Let's see, which is the final decision of the, of the jury. The, was, the court was basically saying that your central charge against the Catalan defendants doesn't hold up, wasn't it? This is the opinion of the German judges. I don't know how much do they understand about the situation in Spain, but who has to judge is the Spanish court. But there are already suggestions here in Spain that they're not going to get a fair trial. The professor of constitutional law at Seville University, Javier Perez Royo, said, I would like to be wrong, but the way in which the October 1st case has proceeded so far inevitably points to a guilty verdict. The trial will be a farce, even though they will abide by all the legal procedures while it's being held. But the verdict has already been written. It's a chilling accusation, isn't I it? I don't agree with him. Just that? Yes, just that. And you don't agree with the Association of Judges for Democracy about the appointment of some of the leading figures in this case, Supreme Your Court? Your interview is very much biased. We only look for the people who criticize the judges. I can tell you other people who has another views. There may well be other views, but I mean, there's been damaging criticism, hasn't there? Look, it's the third time I am answering you the same answer. In Spain, judiciary is an independent power. Let them do their work. Carlos Puigdemont accused you of contributing to the increase in hate. He said, when you were appointed foreign minister, is this the gesture they had in mind in order to send us a message of fraternal de-escalation? The fact that you have been, you, a Catalan, have been dead set against Catalonia independence. Was he right? Was this a message of fraternal de-escalation? Can you tell me why Mr. Puigdemont is saying these kind of things? I can't. I can't read his mind. I'm asking, whether you, I'm asking whether you agree with him. No, for sure not. Why should I try to defend myself from the accusation of Mr. Puigdemont if you are unable to say on which basis they are set? If you had... Do you have the slightest idea what you are talking about? Do you want to de-escalate the situation? We have been de-escalating the situation. This government has been making a big effort in order to de-escalate the situation, implementing anti all kind of measures in order to make things go into normal again. But we cannot give to the independence people the right to autodetermination as they are asking for, because it is against the Spanish Constitution, and this has nothing to do with international law. 
Why not have a debate about the Constitution and constitutional amendments that, would, that could have touched on those provisions which outlaw independence for Spanish they regions? Could, they could have done it. They could have gone to the Spanish Parliament and present a proposal to reform the Constitution. But the Basque did. They haven't done it. Why didn't you do it? Do you, are you not interested in reforming the Constitution? Who is asking for it? 70% of Spaniards no, want no, constitutional no, no. reform, according, according to the Center for Sociological Research. 70%. Well, stop it. You are continuously lying. The Center for Sociological Research has said, said that 70% of Spaniards want constitutional reform of what? some kind. About of some what? kind. No, of some no, kind. I stop this record. I stop this record. Why? Finish. Why? No, no, finish. I don't want to do that anymore. Minister, in November, the Human Rights Commissioner of the Council of Europe wrote to the Senate and the Congress of Deputies pressing for serious amendments to the so-called Law on Citizen Safety. I know that your government promised meaningful changes to this law, but you haven't delivered them, have you? I've been visiting this the council, and he was not complaining at all. And he said that the Spanish judiciary was considered an independent one and performing according with human rights law. So there was no criticism at all? You didn't read the letter? That, that was sent to yes, you? Yes, but I had an interview with them. I went to talk with them. And for sure, uh, I don't think there is a criticism about the functioning of the Spanish judiciary. But you didn't, you didn't change the law, did you? You promised meaningful changes to it. And you haven't I don't know exactly it. what you are talking about, but in general terms, the consideration that the Human Rights Council makes about the Spanish system are very good. What the Commissioner wrote was in his letter, I find it disturbing that according to the Minister of Interior in 2017 alone, more than 21,000 sanctions have been imposed on the grounds of lack of respect or consideration for police officers. Under articles that can easily be interpreted, he said, in an arbitrary manner and thus have a chilling effect on freedom of expression. Well, I think you have a biased approach to the situation in Spain. What I can tell you is the just uh, Human Rights Court has had much less cases with respect to Spain than to many other European countries. The Court of Human Rights, European Court of Human yes. Rights, decided that a number of Basque separatists in 2010 didn't get a fair trial, did they? You can that, find that doesn't help your argument, does it? No, it doesn't have my argument from your point of view. But I can repeat once and again that the statistics show that Spain has much less, much, much less cases in front of the Court of Human Rights than many other European countries like France, Belgium, Germany and others. But you don't answer for them, you answer for Spain. Are you not concerned about this public safety law? You wanted to change it. Do you find it satisfactory that so many people were sanctioned for disrespecting the police? I am not aware of what you are saying about. I can refer to the statistics in general terms and the good position that Spain has on respecting human rights. Let's talk about arms sales, Minister. In September last year, you announced you had halted the sale of laser-guided bombs to Saudi Arabia amid concerns over the use of such weapons in the war in Yemen. And just days later, you changed your mind and said the contract had to be honored. Why? This contract, a small contract, was honored, but since then, it hasn't been any more sell arms to Saudi Arabia. But you continue to sell arms? Not. Since this government is in office, we haven't sold more arms. You said you had changed your mind and said this particular contract had to be honored. This particular contract had to be already was signed by the previous government and the Spanish socialist government believed that this contract had to be honored, yes, and we honored that.
Yeah, but these bombs, munitions of this kind, have been used against hospitals, hotels, water wells, residential buildings, factories, and last year in a school bus attack. So the question of collateral damage when they've been aimed at civilian targets doesn't really apply, does it? What I said, and everybody who has a minimum intelligence attitude can understand, is that a precision weapon creates less collateral damages than a bomb which is thrown out randomly. Yeah, but if it's aimed at civilian targets anyway, that's just an academic argument, but isn't it? But why, why do you have the proof that they have been used for that? Well, if you read what Human Rights Watch has said last year, as of November last year, 6,872 civilians had been killed and more than 10,000 wounded by Saudi Arabia-led coalition airstrikes. Since 2015, they have documented about 90 apparently unlawful coalition airstrikes which have hit homes, markets, hospitals, schools and mosques. And these are the people you decided to honor the contract with. No, there is not at all a proof on what you are saying that this was caused by this kind of arms. Well, they were bombed. They were, these were coalition, bombed. coalition airstrikes. Yes, but they are bombs and bombs. I am trying to explain you. The only thing I've said, and it's something that if you have a little bit honest approach to the problem, you will understand that a precision bomb creates less collateral damage than a random bomb. As a former president of the European Parliament, I'm sure you've noted the criticism such arms have attracted in that forum last November. MEPs heavily criticized the way member states have green-lighted most arms exports to Saudi Arabia, despite the fact that those exports violated six out of eight criteria and thus undermined the entire European arms control effort. The sports of arms that the Spain has been doing doesn't fulfill completely all legal requirements. Amnesty International said your own arms export law prohibits arms transfers when there is reasonable suspicion they could be used in human rights violations. We have a committee that controls the export of arms and to make sure that when we export arms we don't violate any rules. And you are confident, despite criticism from human rights groups, despite what the EU Parliament has been saying about the need to stop these arms exports to Saudi Arabia, that you haven't violated the, the I criteria? You, I told you for at least two or three times, but you continue asking the same question, that since this government is in office, we haven't continued exported arms. So no more? No more laser-guided bombs? to Saudi Arabia now. This was a contract that has to be honored because it was signed by the previous government and since then it hasn't been another one. Min this is the third time I am asking the same question. Minister, in the time we have left, I'd like to look at developments concerning Gibraltar. Your government has made it clear that you intend to use the Brexit process to reopen the question of shared sovereignty over Gibraltar despite the fact that both Britain and Gibraltar have signaled that that issue is not open for debate. Why do you bother? Bother about what? To open the question of shared sovereignty. Who says that? Your Prime Minister did in November. He said that the issue of shared sovereignty would be back on the table. All the time. Prime Minister Sanchez. For sure. It's on the table all the time. It will be for you, time. but it's not for them. Not for Gibraltar, not for Britain. For sure. And what? So, so why do you think this time you put it back on the table? Do you think it's, you can use the leverage, the leverage of, of Brexit negotiations to put pressure on Britain and Gibraltar? I am really surprised how badly informed you are. Really? really? You don't know anything about what you are talking about. My God. You what do, what don't I know? Did, you did not? And you don't know anything about what you are talking about. We have been saying very clearly that we were not going to use the talks about Brexit to put on the table the question of sovereignty. Uh, are you a liar or are you just not well informed? And you didn't hear your Prime Minister say in November that the issue of shared sovereignty would be back on the table? It will be back on the table, but not during the Brexit negotiations. How ignorant you are. 
incredible. What about through the trade negotiations? If there is to be a free trade agreement between Britain and Spain, what? Between, then will, the, will you again put pressure on Gibraltar? Why do you say these kind of things? I am really surprised. Where did you come from? You do not have the slightest idea of what you are talking about. You say that, it's Minister. Incredible. You say that, and you say that the issue is on the table. First of all, you said that the government had, hadn't said anything about putting it on the table. Then you admit that Prime Minister Sanchez did say that. Can I explain, if you allow please, me to please. give an answer to your continuous questions? Please. Can you give me the opportunity please. of answering you? Please. We have said very clearly that we are not going to put the question of sovereignty on the table on the framework of the Brexit negotiations, and we haven't done it. Which doesn't mean that we forget about the question of sovereignty forever. We reached five agreements with the British government about Gibraltar, which are part of the withdrawal treaty. And in the future, we also agreed with the European Commission that any agreement with the United Kingdom with respect to Gibraltar will have to be under the control of the Spanish government. That's all, nothing more than that. For sure, we keep the question of sovereignty, but it hasn't been put on the table with respect to the Brexit negotiation. You should know about it and not put questions on a false way. You understand on that? February the 18th, Minister, one of your warships sailed into Gibraltar waters and tried to order out commercial vehicle vessels that were tied up there. What was the point of that action? Because it's forbidden for the ships to stop. They can pass, but they cannot stop. Now these were Gibraltar waters, British Gibraltar waters, which you don't Gibraltar recognize. Waters. We do not recognize Gibraltar waters, because according with the Utrecht Treaty, we learn the land, but not the waters. And we are acting according with international law and with the Utrecht Treaty. The ships can pass by, they cannot stop. One of your most experienced diplomats who headed your mission in law of the sea matters, Jose Antonio de Ituriaga, has said publicly that there's no legal basis for claiming that Gibraltar has no territorial waters. This is not the point of view of the Spanish government. It's, if you have a disagreement, and you do have this disagreement over Gibraltar waters, why not settle it through the disputes procedure of the UN Law on the Sea Conference? Why not we, go through we, that? We Britain offered talks as far back as 1969. That's very nice that you put questions. It would be much better if you let the interviewer to answer them. Please, no, answer. you're continually cutting my answers. No, please, yeah, please answer the that. question. I told you, for the Spanish government, the ships can pass by, but they cannot stop in the waters that we consider they don't belong to this Gibraltar sovereign. But why not settle that issue by dialogue? By that. Why not settle the issue? By... according by that. Why not settle it by dialogue? I understand. I, You're not answering my question, Minister. You can ask the question as many times as you want. It's my answer. What are you afraid of? A dialogue, taking it to international arbitration, to the International Court of Justice. They could decide this. The international Court of Justice is not competent for this kind of questions. And the UN law of the sea, they are competent. But you won't take it to them either. You want to put me in the bank of guilty people? No, I'm just asking why not. You are very funny. You are really funny. You've just reached a tax agreement with Britain over Gibraltar. So dialogue can get some results, can't it? Yes, but not with Gibraltar. Who I said with Britain. I said with Britain. With Britain. About Gibraltar. Yes. With Britain. Yes. yes. We're making yeah. agreement. Yeah. Something wrong with it? You were concerned about tax fraud in Gibraltar, is yes. that right? Why not do more to prevent things like fraud and bribery and money laundering anyway? Can't, can't Spain do more anyway? You always can do more. Transparency International says that key European countries are failing to enforce the OECD's anti-bribery convention, which is one of the main instruments for fighting global corruption. Which is the question? 
and Spain is which one is, of which them. Which is the question? And Spain is one of them. Show, currently showing, according to Transparency International, little or no enforcement. Why is that? We do as much as we can. But you could do more. Sure, you too. Could do better your interviews. Minister, good to have you on Complex Arm. Uh, thank you. Thank you to you, but next time I would appreciate if you could the questions in a less biased way. I'm not here just to give you the questions you want, Minister. No.